speak, as I have said, about uh, gender-based violence among refugees, women specifically. And uh, again, I'm going to say my name, Jihad Muhammad, educator and CEO. So let's start right away. Uh, what is gender-based violence? As we know, actually, you know, the, there are many, many definitions, but I try to, you know, got uh, merge one or two definitions to have this in front of us. So what I have got, GBV is violence directed against a person because of that person's gender or violence that affects person of a particular gender, that's proportionately. Gender-based violence is used during crisis as a tactic to harm, humiliate and shame people. Violence against women in particular is understood as a violation of human rights and a form of discrimination against women and shall mean all acts of gender-based violence that result in sexual harm physical harm, psychological or economic harm or suffering to women. Okay, here are again types of GBV against women. Um, most of them actually are, you know, experienced by women inside refugee camps, more maybe even inside hosting uh, countries. Physical violence, uh, verbal violence, psychological violence, sexual violence, socio-economic violence and domestic violence overall, and most of them may be, harassment and sexual harassment. All right, as you can see here in my um, picture, I have taken uh, this from, um, you know, FBA related to UN. Uh, it was in 2016 mainly. As you can see, there, there are 5 million women refugees, all, you know, in, in different parties, uh, 2.7 million only in Turkey. Of course, some of them also, also are in camps. Uh, there are still inside Syria, 13.5 million. These are only women. And 1.1 million in Lebanon, 0.2 in uh, Iraq only, and Jordan, 0.6, and the least of them is in Egypt, 0.1 million. All right, going to the causes. That I think that this is the causes of the continual suffering without a solution. And we are going to discuss this maybe after that. I think this is only based upon my work closely with, with these people. It's out of fear. People do not speak because they are afraid, so they do not you know, address anything related to GBV. And also due to community traditions and customs, there is customs and traditions in the Syrian um, you know, uh, community that says that uh, we, we, we cannot talk, we cannot uh, address this stuff because it's just forbidden. Some people believe it's related to uh, religion. Some people uh, believe that it's only a community tradition that was, you know, put before. Also, there is a problem, uh, you know, due to limited access to women in most affected areas, again, due to number two, the community restrictions and uh, customs and traditions. There is also misinterpretation of the community, especially or specifically men, about what is the GBV. Um, I will speak about an incident that I have seen actually yesterday during my work. I had a training in my organization. I had a training from one of the staff members. He's supposed to be a certified TOT giving, um, you know, giving um, training about uh, PCA. And uh, he was just talking about uh, uh, women and about the GBV violence and just for, you know, uh, making fun of, of the thing. He's supposed to be a certified uh, trainer, but on the other hand, he was just making fun of it, saying that among every 10 women uh, of who attend GBV um, train, uh, trainings, there is three after, after this training, three got divorces. And actually I was like, you know, shocked. What are you saying? If, if, if the man who is supposed to be certi certified and giving the training is just making fun of it, so what about other men? Uh, failure, also other, you know, other um, reasons. It's uh, failure to integrate and involve men in the process of any community behavioral change process. Whenever you know, we, we even try, let's say as women, um, worker or in the humanitarian uh, work, we are trying uh, to adhere or address men to, to integrate into this, but whenever they, they hear anything related to women, they say that 
all right, this is a womanish thing and we don't have to interfere. We are not really interested in what you are saying and we are not going to change for anything. This is, I think it's due to the men reluctancy or this reluctance to participate or talk about GBV. It's just, um, you know, due to patriarchal ideology of power and balance or of power balance. All right, let's move on to the impacts of uh, GBV issue um, goes none addressed. I think, in my opinion, if it's going to be forever and at risk, there will be, you know, huge impact over that. And in fact, we, we, we are living this, we are living this for, for sure now. Um, we have ongoing community conflict and more girls and women lose their functionality in building up their society again. As you know, that um, building up the society after a crisis is not going to be only by men or by boys or by only a specific gender. It should be by all of the community members. But this is not going to happen as long as the gender-based violence is still ongoing and unpunished. Um, also, there is another thing which I was talking about, it, which is normalization of the risks of GBV due to the failure to tackle it. People start looking at uh, this violation against women as it's normal. Okay, this is happening all of the time. Even women themselves, when I'm trying to speak with my, let's say, staff members, with my co-workers, they are saying, really, is this um, a violation? I didn't know my husband is doing that all of the time, or uh, my father was doing that before. So they even do not know that this is a violation for them, or it's a humanitarian, human rights violation or humanitarian shame, or they just don't, don't know and do not want even to listen. And also there is another impact, loss, uh, loss of sense of security among female refugees in camps and other places that um, are more prone to have violations. Uh, some people, these, let's say, women who actually try to listen and try to change, um, on, on the other hand, they are, you know, um, unsecured. They feel that, okay, if, if everyone doesn't want to listen, if everyone is just looking at us as we are witch, you know, witchcraft, something, doing, do, doing stuff by ourselves and attending train trainings by ourselves talking about uh, how to empower men or sorry how to empower women or, or something like that so this is um this is just you know unsecure for us so more more women actually refuse to attend this because they are afraid because maybe if if they attended any of these um, you know, uh, groups or attended any of these trainings, they are going to be divorced, they are going to be debriefed of any of their rights at home or at camps or among uh, their family or whatsoever. Also, the spread of violence as perpetrators always go without any punishment. Um, there is another thing I'm going to, to speak about it um, in relation to this specific point. Um, mo most of the time, girls or women, you know, are afraid to speak um, because the one who gets, because they end up to be the one who gets all of the blame and all of the shame. They think if they are going to, to speak about um, the violations that is happening for them from their family or from their husbands or from even their co-workers at work sometimes, because it also happens at work most of the time in hosting countries, uh, they think that they are going to be taking all of the blame and all of the shame. Why would we speak? People will, will say that uh, we, we just talked about ourselves. Uh, we are going to be, uh, you know, outcasted of, of, of the whole community because we are speaking about violation that is happening towards us, specifically in crime that is related to harassment and sexual harassment. It's, it's a specific topic that people do not speak about it at all. And most women are hushed, hushed to speak and hushed to uh, say that they need more rights or talking about more rights. They are just totally hushed. In my opinion, we shall think out of the box and start advocating for more collaborating programs to combat gender-based violence as it's not a survivor's shame. It's at all not the survivor's shame. It's a whole humanity shame if it would be left untreated. And that's it.
thank you very much for listening to me. Thanks for, for everyone to be today on Diaries Conference and thanks. Mm -hmm.